In Destiny, there exists a class with a long and storied history. Legends and tales homegrown and fostered on the brink of humanity's reach in the hearts of these intrepid adventurers. The stories passed down by hunters ultimately are ones of unyielding triumph, daring adventures, suffering, and finally, what the hunters would tell you know all too well, tragedy. While some may argue that us warlocks and titan mains hold some of the strongest lore in the franchise, it would be hard to deny that hunters have some of the best stories. While my my warlock kin were busy killing themselves to find out about the nature of life and death by adopting the mantra, Wanna find out about death? Then the best way is to fucking die! And the titans were busy with a much more important task by building up our walls to keep all the bad streamer takes out. This gun, she limits me, my guy! <laughs> Kills my expression in raid encounters. Meanwhile, I'm diddling my bunghole, disarming the Metal Gear, activating my Sharingan and stacking buffs like I was building a tower of creatine overdose patients to get optimal DPS out of every encounter. I'm strong arm, my guy! Strong arm! All while the hunters were busy blazing the dangerous trails out on the frontier. Over the course of these challenge runs, I've consistently sent characters screaming into the DCV with extreme prejudice, all while wearing my best high stat roll gear. But none have met the Wuxi try finger palm technique. I unleash on my penis. I mean controller. To delete them more than that of the hunter class. A knee-jerk reaction to the potential terminal diarrhea of a challenge run. I call shattered eye only damage. But today we're back to once again fail upwards and extend our hearts outwards. Just like the hunters of legend come and gone. And pose the question. Can you beat beyond light using only bombardiers? To start this challenge run off I once again immediately delete my hunter. <laughs> now I know this looks bad. You're becoming hysterical. Calm the fuck down. Oh my god. As those of you may not know, your boy has been getting his asshole tongue blasted by hackers getting into his account and wound up having to wipe his PC, including all of his video projects and games. The hackers even managed to take control of my Twitter account and get me banned for running financial crypto scams, meaning that I no longer have a Twitter account, which I see as an absolute fucking W. <laughs> I actually had this challenge run finished, but thanks to getting double dick by those that would hurt this Hot Wheels parking lot profit, I had lost it all. But mama didn't raise no bitch, and I'll be damned if Papa Rai calls it quits. We hear it Riley Reloaded. Do a little rising to the occasion, meaning that I'll do it again. I'll fucking do it again. <laughs> Even if it hurts. My hunter is then once again content vaulted in what I can only assume would be considered a grand betrayal in his eyes, because we just pulled him out and son of a bitch, I forgot to take off my bombardiers. <laughs> we create a new hunter, sporting the holy color combination, and once once again begin our journey. We are then greeted as, as, nah shit, I'm running out of billionaires that are trying to get to space. Now that I think about it, it's pretty odd that all the rich guys are just trying to leave. They must have been stuck on War Priest for eight hours and still miss the day one emblem. I can't use Zuckerbot because he's too busy trying to put us all in VR so we can hatch his lizard babies without us noticing. Is that fucking barbecue sauce on your shelves? That is not a bedroom item! Hello fellow humans, I too do human things such as the eating and the barbecue saucing. I know I mention it every time, but just listening to that open Opening Destiny music gets me amped up. It's like eight years of history and nostalgia boners being beamed into my skull. I am then risen from the dead once again to violate my LC Bray restraining order, and then for some reason I just stand there for a couple minutes, letting existence weigh me down. Oops, Riley, you accidentally let day 8800 of getting this bread in. So much pain! So much pain! Anyway, we then ride our ass onto the dam where I dim over my hunter gear and luckily enough I still have another pair of bombardiers. You see, you can all learn a lesson from me. Sometimes logic and planning is for fucking nerds and you gotta rely on pure RNG. I equip my gear, watch as the fallen lurk in the shadows like me outside of Savathun's bedchambers and finally grab the holy Kavasta of artifact. My ghost then says, You're a hunter. That means you're not afraid to take risks. Like teabagging too early in a trials match and accidentally triggering the fucking sleeper agents in the enemy team, or vastly overestimating my jumping capabilities. I leg it past every enemy in this opening section while I gather my powers and think about how I always start these challenges by saying can you beat Beyond Light or the Witch Queen campaigns in the title, and then find myself replaying throughout the entire beginning half of the game. In the area where you're supposed to clear out the fall and the game doesn't let me progress. Assuming it's because of this offensive tip flashing on my screen, I fire off my golden gun into the shadow 
shack in the distance. There's probably a fallen farmer and his wife in there, and I just vaporized the fucking cat. <laughs> I then run back into the dam and the quest step begins. I drop bombs under the fallen around me, not giving any to the fallen walker until I complete the quest step. My ghost then detects a friendly signal nearby, but it really should have detected a beta male signal as Shaw Handjobs is then introduced to the player character. No fire team, no social status, and probably no butthole since this guy feeds on radiation. <laughs> my ghost says we got your distress call and that we're here to help. Even though I can feel the testosterone leaching from my body as I merely exist in his presence, he tries to bail out of hanging out with me by saying sit tight, I'll help you out soon, but Buzz Lightyear claps back by saying, I've made it this far. To which Shaw Han is immediately persuaded. I then retake control of the fallen jammer by leaving a little gift surprise, and once the signal is restored, I race towards Skywatch. I then pull out Sagira's shell, which took me way too long to get, and a ship that radiates a mad adorable factor, and paint them with the beautiful colors of the Hot Wheels Messiah. I inspect the shield generator, explode the servitors guarding the terminals, and enter Skywatch. Something nice about this run is that with Bombardiers and Acrobats Dodge, I can regain my class ability extremely quickly, meaning that instead of waiting three plus minutes for a super like in the Witch Queen super run, I can consistently deal damage at a pretty impressive rate, and since in Beyond Light and in base destiny content, the enemies fucking explode when you even think about doing damage to them, this becomes a breeze. I clear out the room before where Shaw Han's friend is getting the good suck from the Hive Wizard, and then give her the meta hunter treatment. Shaw Han only gives his friends a minute of remembrance and then says, oh well, better finish the job. But now that I've finished the schism mission, I can play Beyond Light unimpeded, not giving up on the opportunity to regain some masculinity by taking to the fucking stars. I immediately yeet and skeet my ass into orbit. Immediately afterwards, the Witch Queen campaign intro begins, where we get to see the Cabal in blue ships carting over a massive gun to point at Savathun's ship. Funnily enough, in this cutscene, you can see that the ships and the gun itself are blue, but once you're in-game, the Cabal are back to being the Red Legion colors, even though Keitel's Legion had her own army in the seasons prior. Then, in a sick game to tease me because I am easily swayed into doing things the fucking hard way, the game puts up the difficulty selection screen. I told myself, just do Beyond Light Riley. <laughs> Calm down, man. <laughs> because after getting titty twisted by the hackers, I needed something easy. Destiny had arrived. And I sat on the screen for two minutes, honestly contemplating if I should do it or not. But in the end, I ultimately backed down. Because you should have honestly seen all the comments I got saying, Riley, why you gotta always delete the hunter? And there was this one with a little sad face behind it. And, and since I've been so cruel to my hunter mains out there, I decided that it was time to give them sweet retribution by getting up to power and then taking on the Shattered Eye only legendary campaign run. To which I'm not sure if I should allow grenades or not, because if I don't, that challenge gonna be a whole lot worse. I then also decided it was time to bestow one of the highest honors I possibly could upon my hunter, and I headed off towards the appearance screen. I worked tirelessly, handcrafting a set forged by the gods themselves, one that would make mere mortals tremble at the sight of the overwhelming power within. And I whipped up this bad boy. God, this armor fucks! <laughs> and with everyone in the audience once again sodden by Riley's fashion endgame, it was finally time to begin Beyond Light. Varix then partakes in one of my most deeply entrenched fantasies, walking through deep snow and nearing my destination after a long journey, but with purpose. He then enters a research station and sets the splinter aside, to which Dami Mami Elsie Bray snags it and vanishes. Aramis and her homies roll up to fade Varix like a bad trip to the barber, and we cut to the most beautiful guardian that has ever walked this frigid moon, giving me mad Goku vibes as I've got my Gi symbol on the back. I love how this DLC starts with us on the edge. They all scan the same. Empty. And even though all throughout Destiny's history, we've been actively fighting against the darkness to try to secure our place in the universe, nearly every character in this DLC just goes, All right, fuck it. Friendship with the light is over. Darkness is my new homie. I'd at least expect Zavala to go, Stop! But instead he just says, You keep doing you, buddy. <laughs> I remember I went up to Lord Saladin after unlocking my powers in the first Iron Banner that came back, and he said that if I continue down this path, then he will have no choice but to hunt me down. Then I loaded up the game mode and was getting fuster clucked by six stacks of Shatter Dive Hunters. It's not a problem. Broken? You're just bad, kid. As they kill a titan in a bubble with a grenade and a bunny hop. The nightmares, they're coming back. After the mission starts, I begin to mod out my gear. I make sure to add in as much mobility as possible to give all the metagaming min-maxers a brain aneurysm and begin my journey on the frigid moon. I still love the fallen catches and watching them move around is always such a treat. The season of plunder has them all over and I love it. But one moment that stands out to me is this one from Destiny 1, where you take a moment to briefly connect with your ghost on the back of a fallen catch. Every Every ghost is born knowing that we have to find our guardian. We don't know what they look like. Not on the outside, anyway. On the inside, I'd always known who you were, and that together, we could be something more. When you think about everything we've seen, everything we've done, 
I feel like I made the right choice. Hmm. We should let Shiro know how it went out here. Let him admire his handiwork. And thanks, you know, for being my guardian. It's the moments like this that I love the most in Destiny. Ones where it personally connects me to the story. They could literally blow up the last city and I'd be sitting there like, alright, cool. Because I've not even seen a soul besides these guys in the tower saying almost the exact same lines for the better part of eight years. That's part of the reason why Cade's death hit so hard, because we were so invested in him, because he interacted with us and put in an effort. Zavala is starting to show this pretty well as well. I got fucking goosebumps in the Witch Queen when he lost his shit after hearing the Traveler was up to no good. Started making trouble in a neighborhood. Traveler moved on to our system where it sacrificed itself to save humanity from the same forces. Forces which included the Hive! Oh, shit. But for once, I'd like to walk down the city streets and eat at a noodle shop, show the people that we're not gods in a tower, and that their lives are not forfeit to those forces much bigger than themselves. I slowly drop bombs on the feet of the fallen outside of Elsie's camp, whittling down their numbers, scan the terminal inside, and get jumped by a small army that takes a while to take down as I stylishly dip, duck, and dive my ass between them. Aramis drops the hottest disrespect this side of the tournament and freezes Varix to the ground. Varix then tries to weasel his way out of the situation by saying, You change, bro. But God, I gotta admit, Varix as kind of a weak defense. And for his pleading, Aramis rips and crushes his prosthetic arm. I engage in combat with the fallen that surround Varix by dropping little nukes on their temples in the most little shit of ways I can. After clearing the fallen out, I free Varix, but first the hunter mindset takes over and I'm forced to emote on him. I then hit that stanky leg while Varix thanks me and runs away, leaving me to fight the fallen by myself. The fallen mount a second assault, but I'm a slippery boy and have been bathing in the gamer grease, so good luck catching me, chuckle nuts. When I run up to drop a bomb on the brig, he sends me flying like an anime protagonist, which I realize quickly becomes a reality I just have to face while fighting Briggs, and Varric says that I did kill Cade accidentally. But don't worry about that right now, asshole. They got the darkness and are coming for me. If they want me dead, then we gotta be cool. To which I say, alright. Before continuing, I head for the tower to gather up some supplies. I want to find a way to make this more effective if I'm going to use it. Right now, even though the bombardiers recharge at a rate of about 30 seconds, I feel there's a way to make this quicker. I run to 801 and then just stand there pondering why the hell I'm here. It's like when you walk into the kitchen to get something with absolute purpose and resolution. But the moment you enter the kitchen, the reason you're there just vacates your body. But enough about that, you guys need this mod right fucking now. I'm literally shitting and cuss- I then walk up to, um, winning and once again wonder why I'm near Hawthorne. I then jump down to Ikora and gather aspects and fragments for both Ark and Solar. My initial thought was going to be to use the fragment that recharges you when you run to get my class ability back faster. But when I looked into Solar, there is one that recharges your class ability whenever you apply Scorch to targets. Which after Solar 3.0 came out, the bombardiers can do upon explosions, allowing for up to 5 second recharge rate. Yet again though, with the enemies being made with the durability of a paper straw means that with one good suck I send them to fucking god all limp and moist. Enemies usually die in the initial explosion, not allowing me to proc Scorch, but on the ones with shields, we ball. After spending all my glimmer and returning to D2 poverty, I head to my postmaster to find items to scrap. But for once, he's cleaned right out. This is honestly a rare sight. For once, I'm not plagued by blues. I then head to Raul and max out my glimmer stash, taking off my cum rags and applying my cum riches. I then return to Europa. Next on the European chopping block is the new Kel mission. I ascend the elevator, drop a bomb on the exploder shanks, and annihilate the lads at the door. On my way up to our first encounter with the Kel of Darkness, I drop bombs on my, all my enemies, sending them straight to hell. It reminds me that in this season, there's this mystery being built up around the horrors that Mithrax is hiding. The extent where he's even asked us for more time to find the best ways to express himself. But I fucking guarantee you that no matter what he has done, my people have done ten times worse to his. He could literally skin someone from the last city alive and use their leather to make skin lamps and furniture in his house, and it would still be less than the war crimes we guardians commit on the fucking daily. We literally woke up and chose violence. There hasn't been a single moment where I haven't been genociding his species. We have been exploding, stabbing, shooting everything in sight. I've seen people that have never breathed outside air or been in the vicinity of a shower in this game with hundreds of thousands of kills on their gun trackers, and that's a single guardian. Even after the new cutscene that just dropped, you're probably still in the clear, Mithrax. Anyone remember that demon cutscene with Saint-14? Oh, what about that dragon, the EDC? Hey! No, 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 please, don't kill me, please, no, no, I don't wanna die, please! 
<laughs> you and I both know the one. We all go test out our god-killing arsenals for no reason on this little guy just sitting here. We all good, Mithrax. Let's just call it even. Can't let the past weigh us down. No one in this solar system is free of guilt. Try to do better. You can never be as evil as DLC price hikes and paid event tickets. On the bridge, I continually annihilate myself trying to get past this trap. No idea why it kept on catching me, but for some reason it was just beyond me. We then get a cutscene where Aramis gives her followers the power of stasis, showing that they no longer need to be binded to the chains they need in order to survive by binding themselves to new chains. I then make a hasty getaway by being a little turbo weenie by dropping bombs the entire way back to my ship and head back to meet Varix at Sharon's Crossing. On my way, I meet a warlock who needs to touch some serious grass by the name of Sightnap, who also stole my warlock drip. Varix then tells me that darkness makes you go nutty and that turning to the darkness makes you an edgy cringe lord and that he's too based for that life. He gives me a gun and sends me off to complete the Resistance Rising mission. I head to the flag, activate the mission, and you can't see it because of this black screen, but Power Color once again returned to kick me in the dick, as per tradition at this point. As always, I wish this GPU a very merry burn in hell. But upon loading up the game, once again, I'm hit with the seasonal recap from Beyond Light's Splicer mission. Mithrax fulfilling the prophecy of uniting the fallen houses under the Kell of Kells by walking with the light instead of trying to steal it is a fantastic concept. I've been following his lore closely ever since I decided to not put a bullet into his cranium and found him camping under the farm. I miss the farm. Aramis then breaks free of the ice, which throws the whole continuity of this DLC challenge run out of whack. I load in and immediately head back to orbit because I've got important shit to do. Funnily enough, I had to catch up on three weeks of D2 seasonal story on Twitch because I was so far behind thanks to only doing challenge runs and fighting the hackers off my data. My crew was as carefully chosen as the disciples of Christ, and I will not tolerate stowaways. <laughs> You will be flogged, and when we put into Cuba to resupply, God willing, you will be flogged some more. Next mission has me activating three comms relays, and on the final one, the darkness blows away the snowstorm and beckons me to follow. I then watch from the cliff face as all the fallen walk towards the large crux in the sky, hoping to get some sweet new powers. If only I could talk in this scene because I'd be yelling, TURN BACK! You guys are about to get absolutely molested. It ain't even a contest, bro. <laughs> It ain't even a contest. You just straight up die. The ziggurat then falls into the ice, and the molestation I warned about comes out in full swing as the dark vanguard doesn't even give the fallen the option of signing the consent form. Elsie Bray finally talks to me and says that the floodgates are open, and in the middle of her speech, I'm visited by a guest. Elsie then tells me to get jiggy in the ziggy, and that the line between light and dark is so very thin. I then see Howie outside, who offends my eyes by flossing his yee -ye ass in front of me, then doing this. <laughs> Me. Actually got a good laugh out of me. Glorious camaraderie. But this is a solo act and I immediately content vault his ass. I then talk to Eris who says she's happy to see me and that she needs me as a buffer to stop her from getting asked to join Drifter in Gambit. I then talk to the Drifter who says, Way to go, brother. Looks like you got the Hot Wheels man on your side now. Best behave. Otherwise, you can have a one-way flight back to the DCV. Oh, that's going in my cringe bank. And I head off to get Jiggy in the Ziggy. I style on the half pipe and hit some sick flippies on the way down and get my first attunement quest from the Crux. I head to the Nexus to begin learning the path of stasis. I am then frozen in my jorts and upon breaking free, I've got a power boost like none other. I've activated my cringe lord jutsu and can drop bombardiers like the Halo Infinite player count. After laying waste to the Vex inside, I get crushed like a soda can and head off to unseal the chest. I drop a couple more bombs and when there's only one vandal left, something takes over me and I start clowning on my man. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the hunter mindset is slowly infecting me. I said in the Beyond Light melee only run that when I play hunter, I feel a lot more meme as though I just want to be a jokester. You wouldn't hurt me, would you? A silly little trickster? Just a jokey little meme guy, would you? We then talk to Varix, who says that I walk a dangerous path, but I've used one ply and know what it's like to live on the edge. A wise man once told me, he who wipe with one ply run risk of stink finger. We then hit the your open trail to go goblin mode on the warrior's ass. Riley's hunter, once D DCV, now the bringer of the DCV, descends upon the warrior and her kin. I always found this quest step ironic because the main goal and themes of this DLC is to free the Elixni people from their misguided delusions of following the darkness by showing them the error of their ways. We do that by busting into their new home made out of salvage and crushed dreams and just start massacring their people. You never really think about it, but every Elixni you kill here is another one that won't go home to his wife. Or vaporize cat! I drop bombs on their platoons and then I realize that this task is going to be tougher and more time consuming than I'd like. Thankfully, 
I see a guardian attacking some Vex who salutes me, and I use the universal guardian language to get him to descend upon my foes. Without hesitation, this warrior of the Chadley type rolled in and started blasting the fallen with extreme prejudice. We even had this guardian Shodan show up to save my ass from the distance. I then rocket away to kill the last platoon, and when the brig ships begin to fall in, I go hunting for my friends to get that sweet, sweet unpaid labor. But they completely shrug off my advances, leaving me extremely flaccid, and to add further insult to injury, they pop a sick drift and sparrow away. Thankfully, while my back was turned, there was an absolute hero in the back taking care of it for me. I stand to the side like a beta male and let the Sigma real ATC handle all my problems, and in true Riley Reloaded fashion, doing nothing and taking all the credit. I like to call this technique the governmental approach. I celebrate our victory by busting it down sexual style, then rocketing off towards the flag. I slowly but surely whittle down my enemy density, but even with the fragment that recharges my class ability quicker, when things are scorched, this still takes more time than I'd like, which is something I just need to accept as part of the liquid diarrhea I subject myself to daily. I then get laid clean out by a wyvern, return with a vengeance, and, and then am stumped by the one thing that can stop all hunter me. A jumping puzzle. As you see my Hot Wheels disciples, they put a cube in the sky, and my gimpy hunter double jump doesn't offer me the distance I need to clear this jump. But Riley came reloaded with a plan. I equip Stompy, clear the gap, forget to take them off and dodge off the side, climb up once again and drop a little surprise from my pants on the top of the cube. Now, we have a method. All that's left to do is execute it on the rest of the mission. I am extremely agile in this room and drop bombs in the perfect locations, making this encounter a breeze. The next room takes a little bit longer, but after banging my limp wiener against legendary enemies in the damage traveler's chosen run, this is like getting a million dollars when you're on the moon. The cubes are low enough for me to drop bombs on them easily and we move on to the boss room. It was at this moment that the homies activated my secret technique. Cosmic and Ginger finally caught wind of my 137 mobility and their brains were sufficiently aneurysmed. They activated my fucking trap card. I roll into the boss room like an angel of death on my quest to acquire massive mommy milkies and slap the boots right off of Aramis's general. When I enter the final phase, I am given a massive boost to my damage. When stasis empowered, you gain your class ability back extremely fast, meaning that I can sling off parting gifts left and right. The boss gets bent over and taken down to Flavortown. Absolutely no mercy was given this day as Riley slapped the boss silly until there was pain. When the boss gets a stasis shield, I had no idea how to break it. I could shoot them with a stasis weapon, but that would invalidate the run. I could use a grenade, but that would also invalidate the run. And after this challenge run, I'm still unsure if using a stasis subclass changes the damage of Bombardier's 2B stasis and can break the shield. I honestly probably should have tested that, but I came up with a little bit more elegant of a solution. That may or may not invalidate the run depending on what you'd think. In these challenge runs, I am okay with environmental damage as long as it was procced by the method of the run. It's not about completely outlawing the equipment, it's about dealing damage with the equipment that the run has. Not entirely sure if this counts, but I throw a glacier grenade far enough away from the boss to not deal damage, and then drop a bombardier close to explode the crystals. This is normally the time where I'd bribe you and make my getaway, but your boy's bank accounts are frozen due to the hackers. So think fast, Chuckle Nuts! I drop the boss, give her a good sniff. <laughs> and upon coming out of the mission, I once again let the weight of never being enough take over. We then return to Elsie Bray, who tells us that darkness places a spotlight on her desires. Bitch, you notice and still wonder why I'm outside your house all night. She then tells me to look within and focus my power to let it grow. Uh oh, something's growing, all right. Where are my nipples so long? I then get jiggy in the ziggy, head towards Bray Exoscience, get stuck on the stairs. Come on, Bungie, you know we're driving down here. You know I'll do whatever I can to get my sparrow in weird places. Beautiful scenery, though. I love your eyes. Artists. And when the darkness puts me in the tummy hurdy stance, I go fucking wild on the fallen inside. They manage to catch up to me, and due to having the mobility of Usain Bolt on crack cocaine and the resilience of a redditor, they lay me clean out. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> and we return to talk to Varix. Varix lets me know that Praxis figured out how to use the darkness and now uses it to craft evil equipment like a BMW with heated seat subscriptions. But there's one thing they didn't account for, and that's Papa Rai, who died on the parking lot cross for your low prices. This Hot Wheels mange messiah is coming to give you the connection. Canadian Super Slurper 9000 Praxis. Now I won't bore you with the busy work, but I'll have you know that trying to gather the tracking modules that are already slow to drop in tiny clusters of enemies that spawn far away with only bombardiers is about as fun as drinking out of a sewer drain. I collect the trackers and head for the conflux. I clear out the enemies slowly but surely, and once the shield is down, your boy once again becomes stuck. Bungie put these way too high in the air for me to reach. My first thought was to assemble the Avengers, but alas, I was left on red. I tried Zeno, Jade Rabbit, and Ultra Tough Geico, but 
not a soul turned up in my hour of need. That was until I pulled the most advanced move a Destiny player has ever seen. One so unbelievable it is enough to shake the entire Destiny community to its core. I threw up my hand jutsu signs and summoned the one thing a Destiny player has never experienced. I sacrificed PvP- <laughs> I sacrificed PvP crucible skill and 24-7 grinding to summon a fucking female! That's right, baby. I summoned Miss Reloaded to take advantage of unpaid labor I can feel alright about. I put my lovely lass of 10 years together to the Riley stealing the credit gauntlet and got her to shoot the crystals. This entire time, I've had my stealth drive initiated, walking with the fake virginity shield in the Destiny community, like using zombie blood as camouflage in The Walking Dead. Just know that you can absolutely believe me when I say she's not, not, an, old, not an old account. I get her to allow me to clear out the enemies and only shoot the crystals in the sky. Honestly, I don't even know if I consider this part of the challenge one because it does feel a bit greasy to use backup. Well, I love using cheese in this game at any opportunity. I've ran many last wish and I still don't know how to do Riven legit. These challenge runs are supposed to be a test of metal, overcoming overwhelming odds by using smart tactics and never taking the easy way out. While technically I haven't failed, it, it still does feel that way because this challenge would be extremely easy if I just let other people take care of it for me every time. I hope to minimize this by only having inertia shoot the crystals and hide behind the pillar while I fight the enemies. Destiny is a cooperative game after all, but it's not in the spirit of the challenge run. Look, she's even doing a little head ghost dance. After her work was done, we part ways. I get laid clean out once again, see how much damage I deal to the server, because this man is beefy, and I finally get the banner to take on the technocrat. I rip through this mission at a good pace because the wait time is only 30 seconds before I can drop a bomb, and about 5 whenever I proc the scorch damage on enemies. I roll in like John Wick after someone shot my dog. Just look how I rip through this hallway. I survive the traps on this door for the first time as my hunter, and finally come face to face with the technocrat. I remember running the master edition of this and being on a controller means we have aim assist on. For some reason, these fucking shield transmitters have a gravitational pull that will always pull your reticle in on it. It's so strong that it had me saying to my fire team, you guys got aim assist? Nah, I got aim resist. I can't count the amount of times aim assist has twisted my nipples in this game, but it's gotta be a lot at this point. The shanks overwhelm me as I have no way of damaging them, and they have the range advantage. I panic run away and manage to make it through the snipers even though I was terminally wounded. We then begin our fight with the technocrat. This fight is extremely easy as it's more of a waiting game than anything. I just recharge my bombardier package, and since I can stand on top of the shield transmitters, I just drop a bomb on them whenever I get the chance. Once the shields go down, I just dodge in between the boss's heels and what I assume has to be the most annoying shit to deal with, then rinse and repeat until we hit the immunity phase. Darkness gives me a Zenkai boost, and I once again use my glacial grenade technique. I kill the boss, bag for DPS, and we get the cutscene of Aramis hoigging the fuck out because she just pissed off an immortal godslayer that has no problem committing war crimes on the daily. I then return to our camp in the beyond, get extremely close to Zavala. I mean, your skull, dinky. You are creepy inside, my guy. Zavala says, don't lose sight of who you are as I fucking fuse into him and take up the mantle of an eldritch horror. Listen to me, Zavala. I'm the vanguard now. We then return to Earth to waste our precious brain cells talking to Shah Han, commit more war crimes in the Elixni, just chilling in the divide, head into the lost sect. The darkness gives me infinite dodges again, making this a breeze. But enough about that boring shit. There's spin metal here. We'll slap the milk off of Bacris's mustache by the way of a thousand dodges. We then head to Europa and hit the glassway strike, which whenever I'm on a challenge run, I always feel bad for the people who do all the work for me in these. They were some powerful lads though. They ripped through this thing at Mach 8. It was going extremely well as I stood by while these absolute Chad warriors of the light turned the elixir into a wet stain on the ground. But once we get to the part where you drain the radial loria, they placed a well which gave me an arc soul. Now, not wanting the arc soul to deal damage, I buried my face towards the wall and let them continue their battle. I was pretty much useless this entire fight, just picking off smaller enemies when I can, and thanks to having a Navy SEAL team on my side, this was over in a heartbeat. I'm given no loot and sent straight to a cutscene. I really love the art style Bungie decided to drop for their cutscenes like this. They look so good. I wanted to do something like this for Lightless because I really love that series and want to create it faster, but after having to wipe my drives due to hackers, I will admit that your boy hasn't exactly been 100% himself. I have been targeted. But I will find the strength to return to it because of all the love that was for that series. It was one of the best things that I've gotten to do. Getting to work with amazing people like Steven who did the artwork, the amazing work of the voice actor, and the community for it was a dream come true. Seeing Dank start diving into the lore was a certified treat and heartwarming to know that I brought that kind of joy into everyone's life and seeing all that blown away does a bit of damage. But like I said before, we do a little rising to the occasion and even though there are some dark days, giving up is always the last option. As long as I can make something that you are all proud of me for, then that is good enough for me. Aramis then says, Choice, but to use darkness to rip 
shred and tear through every single one of your kind. Some Bungie dev has been playing a little too much Doom. Then LC says that use the power within to control darkness, which I would have liked to see us struggle with a bit more. But alright, power within, and we activate our next seal in the ziggurat. I am then tasked with heading back into the fallen city, re-reborn, but on my way I notice a ton of sparrows on the elevator. Just look at this whip! Damn, that's cold! Well, I can't leave this public parking violation in good consciousness and give them the old kablooey. I commune with the darkness, enter the diarrhea stance, and drop little bombs all over the room. This room sends out a lot of snipers and exploders shanks that consistently keep me on the move. If only there was some way to take more damage! Maybe some sort of stat for that or something. I get laid out many more times, get the power zucked out of me. Varix then gets me to free his people from Aramis's cold clutches, which equates to only freeing a single skiff. You're telling me, Varix, that in an entire gigantic city of Fallen, only a single ship of people were like, yeah, this shit is whack. The rest were sitting there yelling, I start fighting the generals that want to hold them back from escaping, and for some reason, in this DLC, I have a knack for getting people to follow me in unpaid labor. This time, a lovely warlock by the name of Inbounds Fire came to my rescue. I shoot at his chest to get his attention, beckoning for his help, and motioning for him to follow. He comes with me without a single word spoken. It's true. Real Gs do move in silence, like in lasagna. I activate the transmitter. This lad goes buck wild, nuking the battlefield, and with the skiff released, I clasp with Inbounds Fire and headed for the flag. Even with a shitty build, I curb stomped the elixni on my way up to the fallen city. It was absolutely disgusting, the travesties that occurred in that Thunderdome. The elixni are gonna have to draw me a cutscene after the destruction of some ass clown wearing a dinky outfit, blowing apart their cousin Jerry while emoting the entire way. Last time I talked about the fallen general who stands before Aramis's final room as though he's the baddest thing that ever walked the icy moon. I mean, just look at the power, the presence, the fucking stance! I thought with bombardiers he would put up a pretty good fight, but my man just got to Disintegrated. Aramis takes a bit more damage than I expected, but with the recharge rate of the Scorch applying every second bomb I drop, this took no time at all. Aramis then freezes my ass to the tile. I call for ghost help, but he lets me know that much like PayPal's customer support, this is beyond him, and I decide, fuck it, I'll figure it out myself. I break out of my crystals as the music gets hyped. I then deliver a raw line. The only thing we have to break here is you. And then it ain't even a contest. Aramis gets folded like a lawn chair, faded like Riley on the pipes, creased like Payless shoes. I just dodge around her ankles like I was the best player on the basketball court. Thankfully, the dodge for some reason ignores the stomp mechanic, meaning that I can just continue this mental deficiency play until I've won. I honestly wish this fight was a little bit more harrowing. It doesn't feel like a proper Riley Reloaded video unless you've gotten the same feeling of getting surprised by a bidet. Aramis then freezes with arms outstretched towards the pyramid in a setup for a story that will come much, much later from this DLC start point. I enter the pyramid to fully unlock my stasis kit once again. Talk to Elsie Bray who says the darkness got a hold of everyone in her timeline. I don't know, that sounds kind of like a skill issue to me. I then return to the tower to end my Beyond Light journey. I always seem to end Beyond Light on a crisp morning in the tower. I swear they updated the graphics because this is breathtaking. I talk to Zavala who doesn't say anything but makes disturbing facial gestures at me. It's okay Zavala, just beam the info into my brain. I'm Oddly enough, he's still charismatic as he does this. Well, either way, he gives me the same amount of info he would if he was talking, and with this little adventure out of the way, I beat Beyond Light using only Bombardier. Thank you guys for watching. I've been put through the ringer over the past little while thanks to the hackers, bank accounts frozen, and more. It's just been a mess. So honestly, it's heartwarming to see the channel at the size it's at and the support while you guys wait for your boy to pick up the pieces. I want to take this moment to give a huge thanks to Lizard who's been cooking up these thumbnail outlines and Inertia for doing the coloring on them. They've been doing an amazing job and I'm honored to have their skills on this. Like, did you see that super one? That was gorgeous! In the meantime, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch. It's just easier to de-stress that way after seeing all my videos files just vanish. The one thing I want more than anything is to be around on the channel a lot more for everyone. Something that everyone on Patreon is helping me draw closer and closer to. So I want to give a big thanks to Cameron Scholes, Mr. Captain McDaddy Clutch. Amazing! <laughs> Rikon6, Kiggle Borpin Top Belop Shard to say <laughs> Use it here little shit! KXNG Kitty Bitty, Garrett Kane, Demetrius, Joshua Greenleaf, Pepsi Main, Magneto, Uncertain Judd, NT Pin Hero, The Cosmic Essence, our McGuire, Zarin King, Sensei Smo, Mordant, T7 Code 99, Ivy Stevie, Jonathan Blaylock, Cozy from the Discord, Kenneth, Amen Smith, 128 symbols, not bad, <laughs> 128 symbols, not bad, not bad, story time! <laughs>
<laughs> Why do you hate me, lizard? Lamotion. Lamotion. Lamotion? Riley Sheldon. My god, you actually spelt it right. Glorious. Now I'm suing you. <laughs> Jaylock. Shoo! I'm like Austin. Azure Knight. Lone Ranger 2412. Good. I got a new PC Capone. No, 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 no. I'm doing this so late, they're all getting me laughing. Tekka Sovan, who won that contest all those eons ago? Dank Devastation, your lightless provider. Zerks 14A. Max Copeland, Nadian Syrup, X9, 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 X9. Ben the Unit Stanfill. Hakate XD, 7228. Kari Simpson, Caleb Warman, Kevin Noda. <laughs> Ban me. Your boy, Gamer Weenus. Nathan Dacia, Delegator Valkeen. I'll get to it. Please forgive me. Thruman and Dragon Waffle. Take your damn money back, BB. Hot Wheels Enthusiast, which confused me the first time I saw it. But I see it's you, Dagrapon. Kefnet the Useless. Nathaniel Farmer. CO Camo 3. Arson is Cringe. Crimbo Undying. Madeline Celestia. Bogos Binted. Super Steven, the very same. Mondo 117. James Escalante. Omega Null. Samarchi Desk Hopper. Xavier Human. And Fufu Akio. Yet again, not to get all sappy, but you guys have done a lot for me and upgraded my equipment, allowing me to bring more videos quicker. I'll revamp the Patreon soon enough and be more active so it doesn't feel like your help goes unwanted. But I hope this short one has been good enough for now. I've been Riley, and I'll catch you in the next one.